In this video, we're going to be looking at three special tests that are used in the diagnosis of anterior shoulder instability. One very important note is that these are always done in a specific order. The first one done is this one, which is the apprehension test. This one is immediately followed by the relocation test. And then in theory, the relocation test would be followed by the surprise test, also called the release test. However, in practice, the surprise test is rarely ever done because it can actually cause further dislocation of the shoulder anteriorly and cause a lot of pain and patients do not like it. So normally you would just do the first two, but I cover the third one because it is talked about in the literature but rarely done in clinical practice. So first is the apprehension test. As you can see here, the patient is going to be positioned in supine. The PT is going to passively move the patient's shoulder into 90 degrees of abduction with the elbow flexed to 90 degrees and the radial ulnar joint, or we could say the forearm, is going to be supinated. Now other than the 90 degrees of shoulder abduction and 90 degrees of elbow flexion, you know you're in the correct test position when the patient's anterior forearm faces them or away from you as the PT. Now from this position, the PT is going to passively move their shoulder through external rotation while observing the patient for looks of apprehension. It could be a grimace, it could be anything that might indicate a fear of the movement, fear of the subluxation of the shoulder, fear of the pain, or actual subjective pain reports as they're going through external rotation. So from here, we simply move through external rotation. And a positive test is gonna be apprehension during this passive external rotation and or familiar pain provocation in the shoulder. It doesn't have to be both of these. It could be just the pain or just the apprehension. Either is enough to elicit a positive result. Now as a standalone test, the sensitivity is only 53%. So this test is not good by itself for ruling out anterior shoulder instability, but it has a really darn good specificity of 99% according to one study. So once again, we take the patient's shoulder, move it into 90 degrees of abduction with the elbow flex to 90 degrees, forearm or radial ulnar joint is supinated, and then we move passively through external rotation and monitor for apprehension and subjective pain reports. The second special test in the sequence is the relocation test, which immediately follows the apprehension test. So once you do the apprehension test and it's positive, you shouldn't get out of the test position and start over. You actually hold the test position to begin the relocation test. So remember, in the apprehension test, we had 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, 90 degrees of elbow flexion, forearm is supinated, and we took her through external rotation. And let's suppose right here in that external rotation range of motion, this is where she reported apprehension or fear of subluxation or familiar shoulder pain. Okay? So we hold that exact position. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a posterior force to the humeral head and translate it posteriorly relative to the glenoid fossa. So why do I do that? Well, remember, if somebody has anterior shoulder instability and we take them through external rotation, the tendency is for the humeral head to translate anteriorly excessively. And that's where that fear of subluxation comes from because the humeral head is coming way too far anteriorly. So if I take that humeral head and move it back down posteriorly, I'm putting it more into its normal, natural position. That should actually reduce the patient's apprehension and or pain. So that's what I'm going to do in the relocation test. I'm going to relocate the humeral head. So holding that position, I'm going to find the humeral head and then apply a posterior force and put it back in position. That's the relocation test. And a positive test is going to be where the patient's apprehension and or pain are reduced in this position. And again, they'd be reduced in theory because if their humeral head translated anteriorly, well now I'm basically putting it back by applying that posterior force to the humeral head. Now as a standalone test, the sensitivity is terrible, 30%, but the specificity is pretty darn good, 90%. Now concerning these two special tests, if the apprehension test is negative, there's no need to do the relocation test. Remember, the relocation test is an easing test. So if there's no apprehension or pain at the end of the apprehension test, 
there's nothing to ease, so you wouldn't even do the relocation test, you'd just stop. However, if the apprehension test is positive, that's when you go and proceed to the relocation test and try to ease those symptoms. And if the relocation test is positive, then in most situations you can conclude that the patient may have anterior shoulder instability. However, some previous literature suggested that if the relocation test was positive, that you proceed to a third special test called the surprise test or release test. Although, as I said at the start of the video, this test is rarely used in clinical practice, and hopefully by the end you'll understand why. Now, if you did the surprise test, it's done in supine, and it immediately follows the relocation test. In fact, the starting position for the surprise test literally is the test position for the relocation test. Okay? So after performing the apprehension and, of course, relocation tests, the PT is going to release that posterior directed force on the humeral head. Here's the key, without warning. So right here I have that posterior force on the humeral head that's essentially putting the humeral head back into the correct position because again, when you externally rotate it, it tends to translate anteriorly. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm holding that position and then without warning, I'm just going to release it. That's why it's called the release test and because you're doing it without warning, it's sort of a surprise, but in reality it's kind of a nasty surprise. Uh, because again, when you release that force, what's going to happen? Well, you're still in this externally rotated position, so the humeral head's going to try to pop back anteriorly. This can cause pain, of course, if there was pain from the start, uh, but also because of that snap back anteriorly, it can actually, in some rare cases, actually cause a full dislocation or at least further subluxation. So because of the risk of that, it's recommended to not do this test. If you get positive apprehension tests and positive relocation tests, that is sufficient to rule up an anterior shoulder instability. If you were to press your luck with the surprise test, a positive test is going to be apprehension during the release and or familiar pain provocation in the shoulder with that release. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.